Hello, in this video, I want to show you this book that I'm actually holding in my hand. It's a handbook. <laughs> so I guess that's why it's called a handbook, because you can hold it in one hand. Uh, maybe, maybe that's why it's called that. In any case, it's called Mathematical Handbook, Higher Mathematics. M. Vygotsky is the author, Mir Publishers Moscow. So two things about this book. One, it is very rare. I don't know if copies are available online, and if they are, they're probably really expensive, but I thought, it doesn't matter, let me just show you this book because it's cool. As a collector of math books, this is one of my cooler books in some sense because it's rare, it's, it's hard to get. So people who collect things like things that are rare, so I definitely appreciate rare math books. Also, it's published by Mir Publishers Moscow. Mir Publishers was, perhaps is, I don't know if it still exists, a publishing company in Moscow that would take books that were written in Russian and translate them to tons of other languages, English, Spanish, etc. And they are used all over the world. Uh, so they've taken these books written by um, you know, great Russian uh, mathematicians and scientists and leaders in their field, and they've translated them so that people all over the world can learn from other great minds. And so this one is considered a classic. It's in really good condition. I'm gonna zoom in here and be very gentle with this one. And this book, again, it's not inexpensive. I'm, I probably paid quite a bit of money for this. I probably splurged. Um, typically, you can't get any books uh, by Mere Publishers Moscow inexpensively, especially here in the US. In other countries, it might be different. I know in certain Latin American countries, uh, you can get copies in Spanish, but with shipping, if you're in the US, uh, usually you have to pay more money for these. Translated from the Russian by George Yankovsky. I'm sorry, I just have to smell it. Oh, wow. Wow, look at that. Who's that guy? I wonder if that's the author? Uh, must be, right? It looks like a protractor. Hardcore. It says here, here's the copyrights. First published in 71, second printing 75. So this is the fifth printing, perhaps. To the reader, Mere Publishers would be grateful for your comments on the content, translation, and design of this book. We would also be pleased to receive any other suggestions you may wish to make. Our address is Mere Publishers, and they give you the address there in the USSR. So this is uh, Soviet Russia, right? This is um, a nation that uh, no longer exists, right? The politics changed. Uh, and here he says, English translation, Mere Publishers, 75. Printed in the Union of Soviet Soci Socialist Republics. Wow. Wow, right? Yeah, and then here's the content. Let's take a look at, at what this mystical book contains. So rare, right, uh, to get a book like this from Soviet Russia. The subject of analytic geometry, coordinates. And it goes pretty quickly. If you look at the page numbers there, you see that it goes pretty quickly um, through some of those topics. I'll just pause here for a moment so you can read, but... It has a lot of mathematics, right? So let's turn the page, very thin pages. Wow, wow, so many topics. I'm just gonna go slow here, it's pretty intense. I guess it is, it is a handbook. Then we have solid analytic geometry. So much mathematics in this book. It makes you wonder how long it took to compile this handbook. It's like just, you know, an incredible work by the author here. Must have taken them forever, literally probably years, uh, to to do all this. We have analysis, fundamentals of mathematical analysis. Good. It starts with the rational numbers, real numbers, the number line, limits. So things you might see uh, in a calculus course, and differential calculus. There's your calc one stuff, right? Pretty cool. More stuff there, pretty much probably everything you see in a Calc 1 course and more. Yeah, Rawls theorem, maximum and minima, then integral calculus, so it's like Calc 2. Pretty impressive, right? A handbook of everything mathematics. Plane and space curves. Wow. It's like Calc 3 type stuff. Series. So the author separated series into something different, and it has more advanced topics too, Abel's theorem, so things you would see, you know, not just in a basic calc course, Fourier series, so more, more advanced stuff there. Differentiation and integration of functions of several variables. Wow, wow, just, I gotta smell it again. Just a little whiff here, just, ah. Uh. 
more topics here, differential equations, and then some remarkable curves. Let's, let's zoom into the names of some of these. Some of these you've probably never heard of. Strophoid, cissoid of Diocles or Diocles, leaf of Descar, Versera. Wow, wow, all kinds of interesting things. And then there's tables. There's tables. And I think I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, and what's this say here? This says something interesting. This handbook is a continuation of the handbook of elementary mathematics. I don't think I have that one. By the same author, and includes material usually studied in mathem mathematics courses of higher educational institutions. The designation of this handbook is twofold. Firstly, it is a reference work in which the reader can find definitions, what is a vector product, and factual information such as how to find the surface of a solid of revolution, or how to expand a function in a trigonometric series, and so on. Okay. Definitions, theorems, rules, and formulas accompanied by examples and practical hints are readily found by reference to the comprehensive index or table of contents. Secondly, the handbook is intended for systematic reading. It does not take the place of a textbook until full proofs are only given in exceptional cases. Right, because it's a handbook. However, it can well serve as material for a first acquaintance with the subject. Nice, nice. So you can use this to actually learn according to the author. Let's jump into something that perhaps you're familiar with if you're watching this video. Let's go to... Oh, I don't know. I kind of want to look at series. So let's see what, what chapter that was. So series, I think that was, uh, yeah, 537. I like series. Ooh, the book is just creaking. It's so beautiful. 537. And we'll look at series. I think the art in here is hand-drawn. It must be, right? Look at that. Just, just phenomenal. Series. What's it say here? Introductory remarks. In order to overcome the difficulties involved in integration, Newton and Leibniz expressed the integrand function in the form of a polynomial with an infinite number of terms. See section 270. Applying to such expressions the ordinary rules of algebra, mathematicians of the 18th century made a host of remarkable discoveries. It was observed, however, that if one applied the rules of algebra to infinite sums without restriction, errors would inevitably crop up. It became necessary to state in precise form the basic concepts of infinite series and prove in rigorous fashion the properties of infinite series. This problem was resolved by mathematicians of the 19th century, some of whom we will encounter in the following sections. Ooh, that's right. So who resolved these problems and discussed them? So here it talks about uh, a sequence of numbers and how they add them together and they form a new sequence. Uh, this, is, this is called, these are called the partial sums, by the way. And oh, here he talks about it, the partial sum. It says it down here, partial sum, right? And he forms an infinite series. And then they have an example here, uh, adding one to negative one over and over again. That's a good example to start with. That's a divergent series. It doesn't actually approach, uh, you don't really get an answer there. And here it talks about the difference between convergent and divergent. So it does have, it does have examples. It does, you can use this to learn, right? It's actually a fairly well-written book which obviously it should be, the fact that uh, mere publishers chose this book. They chose to translate this book. Think about that. Think about all the people in the USSR who were mathematicians, right? And, and, and Russia, I mean, Russian is one of the scientific languages, right? French, German, and Russian are considered you know, scientific languages uh, when it comes to mathematics. Because if you go to grad school for mathematics, depending on the school, but most good schools will require that you pass a test uh, to show some proficiency in one of the scientific languages, and those would be French, German, and Russian. Uh, some schools do allow Chinese, but it's mostly those three. And so uh, Russia uh, was, I don't know if it still is, uh, lots of great mathematicians uh, came from there, right? And so they picked this book uh, to translate. Mere publishers did, so I think that says a lot. This is really useful here, too. This has these um, graphs. This is something you possibly see and possibly learn uh, in Calc 3, you see a lot of these. Wow, I can feel the indentations on the book with my fingers. Really cool. Beautiful book. A lot of mathematics in this book. You can, you can learn a lot. Um, it's got a lot in here. And I just wanted to show it to you because it's from my collection. So, yeah, if I find it, I'll leave a link. I, I might be able to. I don't know. I feel like I did see some copies uh, once, but I, I don't think they're super inexpensive. 
But uh, if you can get a hold of it, I definitely recommend getting it. Um, it's rare and it's out of print and it's, you know, published, uh, printed in the USSR. I mean, it's just a, a collectible. Cool book that you can just open up and learn some interesting mathematics uh, by M. Vygotsky, right? Gah, piece of history here. Got to give it one more whiff. Amazing, amazing. Anyways, if you found any value in this content, consider hitting the subscribe button if you want to. And that, that's okay too. Okay too. It's cool you're still watching. Uh, this is a great book, I think. Uh, also, I do have courses on mathematics. They're on, on the Udemy platform, uh, but please use the links through my website, mathsorcerer.com. When you use those links, um, it does two things. One, it helps me greatly, and two, I lowered the price on all my courses to the bare minimum. So if you use those links, I'm pretty sure you'll get a low price. And also, I do have another YouTube channel. Um, it's on fitness. It's called The Fitness Sorcerer. So you can go there and follow me and do some physical fitness, right? So you can come here and train your mind and go there and train your body. Uh, train your mind, train your body. It's something I, I really believe in. Anyways, this is just part of my collection. I thought I would show it to you. Oh, it's just so beautiful. I love this book. Uh, I, I feel like I'm going to sit down and work through it now. I hope it's been helpful. Good luck.